A lot of motion designers still don't know how to create that 3D spinning effect for their animations and they end up getting results that look something like this. But those who know this simple technique get an incredible professional result that looks like this. Alright, let's stop wasting time and jump straight into making this professional pop-up animation. If you're interested in animation and motion graphics and want to learn the right way, step by step, I suggest checking out my Motion Hero course. I've put the link for it down in the video description. So first thing first, let me hide the logo layer for now. And let's move on to animating this kind of layer. First, I'll open the position property. I'll set a keyframe right here. Then I'll move forward about 10 frames. I'll bring it up a bit, go forward five more frames, put it back in its original spot, and then set the influence of the middle keyframe to 60. Okay, let's take a quick look to see how our animation turned out. After we've done that, notice that our anchor point is currently sitting at the bottom of the layer. To place it precisely, we'll use the motion tools script and click this button to snap it right to the bottom. Once that's done, we're going to add the bounce expression to the position animation. In the next step, we're going to animate the layer scale. I'll reveal the scale, set a keyframe at the start, change it to 0, then set it to 100 at the end, and finally easy is the keyframes. Let's play it back and see how that looks. Next, we'll move on to animating the rotation of our layer. I'll set a keyframe at the beginning, and then rotate it 25 degrees at the end. I'm gonna easy ease the first keyframe and paste the bounce expression onto this one as well. To make the rotation happen a bit later, I'll move the first keyframe to frame 4. And to finish the animation sooner, I'll pull the last keyframe back 3 frames to get the specific look for the cat. If it says here, it's not great. But if we pull it back 3 frames, you'll see it gets a nice floating effect. Alright, after getting that done, let's go ahead and create the rotation effect for our can. For that, I'll make the logo layer visible. I'll place its anchor point right in the center. Then I'll put it inside a brand new composition. I'm setting the composition size to match the size of the logo. Actually, I'll make it just a little bit wider. Then I'll crop it. I'll head back to the main comb and rotate the layer 25 degrees so it aligns perfectly with our can. And then to create that cylindrical look, I'm going to apply the CC cylinder effect. To get rid of the shadows and lighting, I'll go into the light settings and tweak it. In the shading section, I'll max out the ambient and bring the diffuse down to zero. Let me hide the background. And to make the layer fit the can size, I'll center the logo comp and reduce the width just a little bit. I'll set it to about 720 and hit OK. Returning to the main comp, it looks about right, so I'll position it over here. Let me go into the rotation settings. We want to rotate it something like this. We want to make sure that when the layer spins, the backside is invisible. To make that happen, we need to set the render option to outside only. So the logo doesn't cover the stroke, we duplicate that can layer and use it as an alpha mat. I'll open the new layer and delete the stroke shape. I'll also delete the inside layer as well, and this one too. So I'm only keeping the shape related to the can's body. Then I'll disable the scale keyframes and reduce the width slightly so the logo doesn't overlap the stroke. After doing that, I'll paint the logo to the layer below and parent the duplicated can layer to the main can layer. To match the logo's perspective with the can, we'll go to Rotation X and rotate it a bit. It should look roughly like this. Then we'll move the layer up just a little bit. To get rid of this clipping, we need to add the group bounce effect to the layer. We'll place it right above the CC cylinder effect. Now increase the pixels until that cutoff look completely disappears. Once that's done, we can easily animate the texture using Rotation Y to create the spinning effect for the can. But before we animate the logo rotation, let me select the layer we used as the mat. I'll press the U key to reveal its keyframe, 
and then disable all its keyframes and expressions. Since it's parented to the layer below, it doesn't need its own animation. And if you don't delete them, the level rotation will glitch. All right, after that, I'll create a keyframe for the Y rotation in our cylinder effect. I'll bring it to the start of the timeline and rotate it this way to achieve a look like this. Then I'll decrease the radiance just a little bit. I'll move it here, apply easy ease. So our work ends up looking something like this. To give our can's rotation a nice bounce, I'll move forward about 7 frames. I'll copy and paste this same keyframe right here. I'll make it linear. Go back to the previous keyframe and increase the rotation so the can spins right and then snaps back left. Then I'll paste the bounce expression on this one too. And let's take a look to see how it turned out. As you can see the can's rotation now has that nice bouncy feel. To make the animation more engaging, I'll push the logo keyframes for Red Event to create some overlap. You see, it's really that simple to create an animation like this. You can also rotate the can another way, where the layer spins more, and after a few frames, spins back, and make the last keyframe linear. Let's check it out. You can easily control the can's rotation and animate it exactly how you want. Now I'll make the background and frame layers visible. To move our object easily without messing up the animation, we select the can layer, use motion tools, and hit add null to parent it. Now we can simply move the null and place our object wherever we like without breaking the animation. And then we can set it up so the can's animation starts right when the frame layer appears. 